The U.S. is entering a recession, says Lynette Zhang, chief market analyst at ITM Trading. There's no doubt in my mind that we're starting hyperinflationary depression, that's the next step, Zhang tells Daniela Cambone. The dollar hit a 20-year high against key trading partners but tells U.S. purchasing power continues to wane. Gold is the only financial instrument with no counterparty risk, and the only asset that is truly invisible, she says. The United States will suffer the most, as the dollar loses its status as the world's reserve currency. Zhang continues to criticize the storage of wealth in the form of blockchain technologies, concluding that, precious metals will get you out of everything. Listen to the full podcast to understand what's going on the US market, and are we heading a serious recession? Please follow us on YouTube and open your notifications for further podcasts. Enjoy. Lynette, it is uh, always such a delight to be reunited with you. Welcome back. Well, you're one of my favorite people, too, so I'm very happy to be here, Daniela. Thank you for having me back. Uh, Well, we got a lot of ground to cover, as I always say. Um, So let's start with the GDP uh, numbers or the Mm -hmm. percentage and the pace at which it's 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 going at here. Uh, I love how you've been tweeting all these headlines and then just doing hashtag got gold. Uh, but but first and foremost, is it noise to you? Is this noise? Is this headline noise to no. you or a true signal uh, that we're headed for a recession? We are getting so many true signals that not only are we heading into a recession. But I, there's no doubt in my mind, and I'm really sorry to say it, but I think we're, we've begun the hyperinflationary depression. That's, that's the next step. So let's talk about that because mm-hmm. we hear all these uh, terms thrown at us, right? Uh, superinflation, stagflation, hyperinflation. Everyone has a thesis uh, around it. I'd like to get yours. Why, why, why this label for you? Well, number one, and I I think a good differentiation between all of those is simply the speed of the inflation and the level of economic growth. But here's the problem. Uh, The government and the central banks, rather, have really used a big part of the inflation to say this is what's happening with GDP. So the fact that we had in the first quarter, it declined by one and a quarter percent when we have inflation officially running at eight and a half percent is frankly very worrisome. Now, why they want to say it's noise is because of all of the checkable deposits that are in the system. So the the theory is, is that the consumer is really strong. Well, I think it depends on which part of the economy you're in because let us not forget that K-shaped recovery. And also with the dollar against other currencies being really strong, right? What does that do to our exports versus our imports, right? Makes imports look cheaper, but it's all really a game. And I don't think this is noise. So you, you're saying it's a, it's, it's a game hiding something? <laughs> yeah. I mean, to say the very least. What if, yeah, to say the very least. I mean, what do we hear? The dollar just hit a 20 year high yeah. against key trading partners. So the yen, the euro, et cetera. Well, uh, at the same time that the, the inflation is raging here in food and housing, in really everything, the services sector, right across the board. Well, how come if our dollar is so strong, how come our yeah. purchasing power is so weak? So Exactly. Yeah, I'm scratching my head over that, you know, every day. So like you said, the purchasing power keeps diminishing, diminishing. U.S. dollar keeps making higher, higher highs. Um, how does this play out? What gives? Mm-hmm. How, what happens? How long can that go on for? We'll see. And that's the whole point, isn't it? If If we truthfully have three cents left, and you look at the rate of the devaluation, so the purchasing power declining, that's really the trend. But if they can make the stock market look like it's high and say, look at this is making new highs, or they can make the dollar against other currencies, because that's what that refers to, then people are going, oh, well, the dollar is strong. I mean, it creates, you know. A perception? Oh, definitely, yes, absolutely. 
but in the reality is that what matters is what you can buy with those dollars. And I think that now that it's running fast enough for people to actually notice it, it's a big problem because what are they really concerned about? De-anchoring of inflation expectations, not inflation itself. Which will lead me to my next point because the Fed will say, well, we're tackling it. You know, we keep raising uh, interest rates here. We're, we're gonna fight this inflation. How successful will they be with the tightening? They won't be. They will not be successful with the tightening because number one, it's a different kind of inflation. It's a supply side inflation versus a demand side inflation. And on top of that, even a 50 point, even if they do a series for the rest of the year of 50 point rate heights, yeah. the interest rate will still be below the level of inflation, even their reported inflation, which of course is when you're out there buying food and anything else, it's much higher than that eight and a half percent. So you're saying we're just too behind the curve to do anything. We perhaps should have started this 10 years ago. Yeah, but where were we, right? I mean, people think or they want the perception to be that this is something different, but the system died in 2008 and this is the very end of it. And I feel like we are lurching from crisis to crisis to crisis, which keeps everybody off balance. And then when we get this final black swan crisis, which the interest rate, increasing the interest rates, 50 basis points at every meeting could certainly be that black swan. I don't think they can do it. I think they have to do it for their credibility, but I think they're gonna have a pivot real fast. And let me ask you this, throw into the mix now, the Shanghai lockdowns, right? So we saw with the first wave where the lockdown started, is it a concern for you that this is gonna come back again, that we're going, you know, it starts in Shanghai and then slowly makes its way back to us? I, I don't think so. I, and here's something I'll just kind of throw out there and I, I can't prove this. So this is just my opinion. <laughs> okay. Right? I can't disclaimer, prove this. Disclaimer, folks, disclaimer. <laughs> yes, definitely a disclaimer. But I'm not 100% convinced that the crisis that's, ha that's happening over in the other part of the world isn't part of this whole transition because they're all members of the IMF. They get together <laughs> regularly. We've watched a synchronized deflation. We've watched a synchronized, now we're watching a synchronized inflation. We watched synchronized money printing. Everything was synchronized and all of a sudden it's not and we're going from crisis to crisis. And you know what I'm curious about? And maybe you've spoken to somebody that knows about this. The lockdowns in China over the Omicron virus, I had it. It wasn't really, I mean, if I hadn't tested because somebody else I knew had it, I wouldn't have even known. It was a slight stuffy yeah. nose. I'm glad that uh, you had a little uh, reaction uh, there, Lynette.